Hi guys, welcome back to Ferris Tutorials. In today's episode, we'll be looking at factors that contribute to changes in dietary needs. Stay tuned! Content 6. Factors contributing to changes in dietary needs. No. What are dietary needs? The word dietary comes from diet, right? And we may say needs is something that we can't do without. Now we're going to look at the factors that changes our dietary requirements or eating requirements. Why is it that we have to change our diet? In today's session, we'll be exploring those factors. Now, let us look at the focus. The factors that will be explored are age, sex, or we may say gender, occupation, level of physical activity, state of health, and also persons who have special needs, which includes pregnant and lactating women and also convalescent. Now, the first factor that we'll be looking at is state of health. How is it do you think that one's state of health will determine the type of food that they're supposed to eat or not? Can you tell? All right, let us see. Some persons have special dietary needs and precautions that need to be taken in meal planning regarding the types of food to be taken or avoided. Now, for example, think about a person's, person who is hypertensive. Now, this person may have to stay away from what? Salty food and also processed food. Now, similarly, for persons who may have diabetes, they may have to stay away from sugary foods and also sugary drinks and refined sugars. Persons who may be anemic may also have to do what? They may have to consume foods that are rich in iron and also vitamin C so absorption may take place. So the state of the health of someone will dictate the type of food they're supposed to eat and also to avoid. Occupational activity of an adult affects energy and nutrient requirements. Good? And this change their dietary needs. The more active the person, the more energy they will need and thus their plate will look different. Now imagine a sedentary worker versus a construction worker. Now who do you think will use more energy and who will need to consume more energy giving foods? Now an example of a sedentary worker may be an office worker, so a secretaries, right? Now compare the activity, the work or the work activity that is involved in a secretary's day versus a construction worker day, right? Now you may find out that the secretary may just uh, sit at the desk, answer phone, reply to emails, while the construction worker may have to build blocks, do heavy lifting, right? I do a lot of walking to take uh, materials to and fro, whatever the case may be. So you may find out that their dietary needs are different. So the, who will need more energy giving foods, right? And more protein, good? So the construction worker will need more energy giving foods because they are more active than maybe a teacher or a, a, even a nurse or a office worker, right? Now let us move on to the other factor. So this factor is gender. How is it do you think the dietary needs of males are different from females. Why is it so? Can you tell? No, the caloric requirement is generally higher in men than in women because men have larger body size and they are more physically active and more, have more lean muscle. 
Also, women have monthly menstrual cycle. So guess what? In order to prevent anemia, they will also have to increase their intake of iron rich foods also with vitamin C. So one, the men may work harder and they have bigger bodies. You, you mostly find, even though you have women who do construction work, you find mostly that men are the ones who engage in these types of activity. Now, you may have some circumstances where females need more energy giving food as well based on their level of activity. But as it relates to male and female, one, iron is a must as female has to replace the iron that is lost monthly. Now age, how does someone age affect their dietary needs? How is it that their age will dictate what they eat and how much they eat and what type of food they eat? Now, let us start with infants. Growth in the first year of life is more rapid than at any other time in the life cycle. And adequate amount of energy and nutrients are required to support rapid growth and development and prevent nutritional inadequacies. Now, so a infant dietary needs is unique at this stage right because it's unique at this stage as they start to develop teeth may be coming out their skeleton their bones are still soft and will want to become hardened so you may find out that calcium protein iron right all of those nutrients are very important as well as other vitamins and essential vitamins and minerals are very important and as such the infants have to get adequate amount of food to meet their needs good now children children grow at a slower rate than infants however their nutrient needs do not diminish they need energy from food for daily physical activities and nutrients to promote growth and health. Good? Adolescence. Now, this stage is a period of rapid growth with great bodily changes. Bones grow and gain in density. Muscles and fat tissues develop and blood volume also increases. Similarly, sexual maturity occurs when boys' voices change and girls experience the onset of menstruation. Calorific requirements increase because of this rapid growth. So similarly, like as with male and female, when we speak of females will need more iron, similarly, females Adolescent females may also will also need iron as well because of the onset of menstruation, right? They also will need energy giving foods, foods that are rich in protein, vitamins, minerals, and also the carbohydrates. Now guys, let us look at adults. The aims of nutrition during adult years are to obtain adequate energy and nutrients. To maintain a healthy body weight, and prevention of chronic diseases through appropriate food choices. Now guys, by the age of 25, growth normally uh, is finished, right? So the color requirement begins to decrease after the age of 25 as basal metabolic rates decrease. Now people during adult years may not get as much exercise or they may not be as much active as in earlier years and therefore their dietary needs must be adjusted. Let us look at the elderly. Physiological, psychological and economic changes affect the elderly nutritional status. At this age, metabolic rate slows down, bone becomes less dense and lean muscle mass is reduced. Eyesight, hearing, taste and smell are less acute and poor detention is common. The secretion of digestive enzymes and hydrochloric acid is diminished which in turn impairs digestion. 
and absorption of nutrients such as vitamin B12. The reduced muscle tone of the intestine may result in constipation in the elderly. No. Based on all these factors that the elderly may face, it is important for us to adjust their diet so that their dietary needs can be met. So we spoke of things such as their eyesight, their bone mass is reduced, so they have to consume adequate foods that are rich in calcium, vitamin D, and phosphorus to help their bones to strengthen and for them to prevent factors right so it is very important for us to understand all the problems that the elderly may face so that their dietary needs may be met let us now look at individual requirements and also special needs some individuals may have specific nutrient requirements or special dietary needs for example, food allergies or intolerances, pregnant and lactating women, and also convalescents. Now, when it comes down to food allergies or intolerances, have you ever heard of lactose intolerance? So those persons may not be able to digest lactose. So therefore, they may have to get their milk source from what? From, uh, from the plant source. So they may have almond milk or soy milk. Now, pregnant and lactating women, you know that they're eating for two, right? Not eating two plates of food, but definitely eating adequate amount of nutrients to supply the needs for both mother and baby. And as it comes on to lactation, they have to ensure that they eat the a balanced diet are one that is one that is rich in the essential nutrients so that the milk the breast milk can also be nutritious and also to supply their body bodies for whatever was lost right when we speak of convalescence we're speaking of persons who are ill or recovering from an injury or an operation whatever the case may be now based on the type of injury or the type of operation that these persons may undergo, it is important for us to supply the adequate amount of nutrients, right? So their dietary, their dietary needs will change. For instance, someone who had, say, a mild stroke, right? This person may be in bed for most of the time, so you may find out that you have to limit the amount of energy given foods. As even persons who have done some form of operation may have lost some amount of blood. So it is very important for us to understand the needs of the individual and to supply their needs accordingly. So the person with the operation may have to consume what? Protein, vitamins and minerals, which help to, to, to heal wounds. Uh, protein which helps to build and repair body tissues they will may not need a lot of energy because they're not moving around as much and if we co they consume too much energy they may become obese Whatever the case is it is very important to understand the factors that contribute to changes in dietary needs and also to plan meals that are adequate plan meals that are will supply the essential nutrients that the persons may need and also to plan the meals and avoid things that they don't need now activity your task is to create a poster with four factors that contributes to changes in dietary needs also you've made it